Okay, so moving on. Uh, everything we've talked about up to this point, so we've talked about um, uh, mobile IP, we've talked about cellular IP, we've talked about a whole bunch of issues related to this. Um, it's all had to do with IPv4. So why have we had to go through all these gyrations in order to um, in order to impose some sort of mobility on IPv4? In other words, uh, could they have been smart enough to invent this in the first place? Um, so it's interesting. I looked it up. Um, what do you think is older? Uh, the invention of the internet protocol or the first uh, commercial cell phone network? What do you think is older? Cell phone network. IP is actually older. So the first, uh, the first paper proposing IP was written in 73. And the first commercial cell phone network was deployed in 78. So uh, uh, another fact. Uh, when, when was the first, what do you think the first commercially successful, or actually commercial, portable computer was developed? 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. Uh, Osborne. So there was a. Does anyone know the uh, first um, IBM compatible uh, portable computer? What was it called? It was produced by Intel in 1980. a company called Compaq. It was their first, uh, their first uh, major commercial success, and they went off to. They were eventually bought by HP, but at one time they were one of the biggest computer companies in the world, and that was in 1983. And it could it could not be used it could not be used portably. Basically, it was it was a suitcase that contained a computer. And at some <laughs> point, like there was a there was a uh, there was a plug that you plugged into the wall, and that, that was that was how portable it was. So you can argue, and that was that was ten years. That was ten years after IP was developed. So you can argue that um, the inventors of IP could not have reasonably foreseen that uh, people would be running around. Enabled cell phones or whatever. Um, does anybody know when? Actually, I don't know this. Uh, I couldn't. I found a couple of answers. Does anybody know when the first uh, internet-capable mobile device was released? Closest answer I can find was '96. Define internet-capable. Okay. Um, <laughs> so like, does the number appear on it or something like that? Some Nokia. I, I read about some Nokia handsets from '96. So. I would think it's probably in the 80s. Uh, all of the, all of the 1980s. Not commercial, but yeah. like in the research, <laughs> some research. Okay, maybe. Uh, the, in the, actually, that's a good point. So um, uh, I actually remember, I'm old enough to remember when uh, the first web browsers were created. That was in like 94. So, uh, and before then, I mean, who would use the internet? It's just all text. And it's like FTP <laughs> and Usenet. So. Um, <laughs> when, when the horizontal rule is the best graphics to use. Yeah. Yeah, that would, that would so anyway, uh, but I digress. But I digress. So anyway, the issue is, um, so IPv4 with no mobility support. And that's because it was first, it's, it was first deployed over uh, actually, IP, IP was invented in 73. IPv4 came around in about 1981. Uh, IPv6 um, was developed in around 1998. And it does explicitly include mobility support. Yeah. Ah, good question. Does anybody know the answer? They skipped the version because it's so much better. <laughs> uh, you're half right. You're half right. They did. Oh, is it because of the number of? So I'm not an expert on this. I actually looked it up today myself. Six, 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 six,
they did skip over V5, and the idea was that there was a there was an experimental protocol after IPv4 um, that was not actually called IPv5, but people thought of it as IPv5. And so to avoid confusion, they just went straight to IPv6. Okay, so um, in 1998, IPv6 was first proposed, and it explicitly includes mobility support. By this time, by 1998, we actually had digital cell phones. So the, the, the first cell phone networks were all analog. We didn't, uh, uh, there were no data services uh, until surprisingly late. I think it was like 94, 95 that those net, that the uh, the first digital cell phones started being released. Yes. So the first cell phones were analog. Yes, they were. <laughs> they're analog radio. Yeah, they're basically yeah, they're basically, right. they're basically just. Uh, just radio. It's like a walkie-talkie, except with a keypad. So, um, and I, you know, they used to get a talk. It was like a portable radio. It's like a portable radio, exactly. Like, uh, yeah. Like the army is running So, uh, <laughs> okay. So, the question is, um, so we've, we've been waiting a decade for IPv6 to take over. Not yet, but um, inevitably IPv4 will run out of IP addresses, so someday we'll have to switch. The question is when, nobody knows. So, um, uh, what, uh, what are the mobility supports in IPv6? So it turns out that uh, mobile IP having the advantage of going first, uh, much of these, much of those services are repeated in IPv6. So fundamentally, it's similar to mobile IP <coughs> in the sense that the um, the way in which messages are exchanged uh, is the same. So in other words, you still have a home agent that maintains a permanent IP address that home agent forwards packets to you. There are a couple of differences. So um, they mostly have to do with the fact that IPv6 devices are all expected to do, uh, greater expectations are applied to them than to IPv4. So for instance, uh, all IPv6 devices allow auto configuration. So intuitively, that's like all IPv6 devices. <coughs> Not all IPv4 devices do DHCP, but all IPv6 devices do something like DHCP. In other words, you can automatically reconfigure all of them with a, uh, uh, with a new IP address. So it's easy to obtain a pair of address. Another thing that all IPv6 devices must do, uh, all IPv6 devices uh, send address bindings. So what do I mean by that? Uh, remember, the table maintained by the home agent is called a binding table. Does is it basically says your your uh, home network address is bound to whatever your whatever your pair of address is. Um, so in IPv6, um, the mobile node uh, the, the mobile node is capable of sending its own address bindings. The consequence of this consequence of these two facts is that foreign agents are no longer required. So if I show up in a new network, uh, I'm capable of auto configuration, so I, I can I can grab my own IP to my own new IP address, um, and then once I know that IP address, I'm capable of sending an address binding, so I can send that directly back to 